welcome to another video well i'm back after christmas i am back in my studio we had a couple of days at mum's i tried to do a bit of art for you but mostly I wanted to spend time with my fam. So that's the reason there were fewer vlogs in the daily-ish vlogs. But that's why I had the ish on the daily-ish title. I hope you had a lovely time. However you, uh, however you celebrate. Uh, it's raining today. I was hoping to go to the coffee shop, which we still might do. But first, let me show you some things that I have got, which are going to be wonderful for my creative journey this year. The continuation of my creative journey. So... <laughs> Let's go. Firstly, sock update. I got a bunch of socks. If you watch previous vlogs, you'll know I was in desperate need of socks. And these are one of the new ones. Excellent. Okay, I'm not going to show you all of my Christmas gifts. That would be weird. Uh, but I will show you the ones that I got that were linked to arty things and things that we'll be using in the next few weeks to continue our arty journey together. So let's do that. I got this, which is a hardback sketchbook, which was actually found by someone in a charity shop. Amazing. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what paper it is. It says it's a Sea White's Brighton. Now it could be just normal cartridge paper. It could be watercolor paper. It's pretty, it's pretty thick, not overly thick. So maybe it's not water, watercolor paper, maybe it's just, cartridge paper but that is so cool for 150 i'm amazed that that was found and it's uh the arts university bournemouth as well so someone obviously didn't finish filling all their sketchbooks so there is that which i'm dead chuffed with i absolutely love gifts from charity shops um i know some people don't but i absolutely do i love the idea that something's been given a second life or a third life and especially when it's like something i'm 100 going to use yeah love that Right, so next. So my sister got me these. And these are going to be great for art clubs. If you don't know, there's a group of illustrators called The Good Ship Illustration. And every now and then on Instagram, they do live art groups. Art, uh, what do they call it? Art clubs. And you do quick painting with uh, minimal materials. And using things like paint sticks and something that's like big and chunky is a really good way to loosen up. Um, so I'm quite excited actually to get into these. It's not the kind of thing I would have bought myself, but they're often, don't you find they're often like the best things? Well, they are now with my new mindset. Get in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've got this sound, it's much easier. So yeah, with my new mindset that I got from my year out, I'm still in my year out really. So I gave myself a year out, if you don't know. I took a step back from making things just to sell uh, and focused heavily on learning how to loosen up and play in uh, in my art journey. So if you don't know, hello, I'm Emma. I'm an illustrator living in Sheffield. I've done this all backwards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just so eager to get back in. Hello, I'm Emma. I'm an illustrator in Sheffield. And this year, 2023, I've taken a year out from making things to sell in my small business, Embers and Ink, and in other in other ways and taking a step back and just giving myself time to focus on sketching, sketchbooking. I, I learned how to sketchbook and observationally sketch, which I couldn't, I couldn't do before. I thought I could do it and I couldn't. I think I had quite a bad relationship with my sketchbooks because my sketchbooks would be a place where I would look at my work and go, I don't like that, therefore I am rubbish. When really, what this year out has taught me um, which basically all of my all of my teaching if you've heard this I'm so sorry but all of the things that I've learned this year have come from the Good Ship Illustration and it started with I'm not sponsored but it started with the free resource of the Sketchbooker's Friend I'll link it in the video description go and check it out if you're stuck creatively if you're stuck you don't know how to sketchbook you want to be more creative in your life and you don't know how you always end up in this cycle of, of self-hate and and a really downward spiral of I'm rubbish everything I make is rubbish this is all rubbish what's the point Go and check out The Sketchbooker's Friend. It's such a simple concept. It's a really quick audio guide. It's a free resource on there. I'm not sponsored. I'm not one of the Good Ship Illustration. I just found it really useful. And But that's really opened my creative floodgates. So now I approach my creativity in a much more open way. I don't... Basically, it's it's all around time sketches, but go and, go and listen to the audio guide because it's so simple, it's so amazing, and they explain it better than I do. But time sketches have really opened my eyes to just creating and not trying to create in any, one, in any style, in anyone's, in, in any other person's style. You know, like, if you 
get caught up on the doom scroll on Instagram or like Pinterest, you'll see people with their beautifully created sketchbooks and you know, you might be tempted to go, oh, I'd love to draw like that and then try and draw like that. And then you can't draw like that because that's not your style. And then you get into this downward spiral of I can't draw like that. Why am I not amazing? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm on that journey of like trying to loosen up and I think I'm getting there. So materials like this are really good to, because they're so like chunky, they're so not detailed and precise. So you can get marks down there on the paper and not feel like it's wrong. It just gets you to loosen up and play. And the art clubs with the good chip illustration, I feel like I'm waffling now. It's been a few days since we've talked and uh, I think you can tell. I'm getting into my stride, don't worry. Uh, but the art clubs with the good chip illustration are also a really good way to help you loosen up because they are just... Uh, they're hosted by the Good Ship Illustration. Um, Helen and Katie usually do it. And they are illustrators. Helen, Katie and Tanya, who are the Good Ship Illustration people, they're professional illustrators in different areas of illustration. And through them, I've learned, I've relearned how to play and be creative and how not everything you do has got to be perfect. In fact, if it's perfect, it's a little bit boring. So I'm embracing the mess and I'm embracing the creativity I've just seen on here though it says mess free painting it's not gonna be I embrace the mess embrace the scribble uh, so they're the kind of arty things that I've got for Christmas which is fine I don't want a big bunch of new materials because I have got so many materials like if you've watched me previously I'm, there's a lot of pencils in here that I don't really use like the Derwent ones I don't really use them anymore I'm much more of a polychrome her favorite castell polychromos person but i've got so many pencils that i don't use and so many paints that i don't use that this year i'm going to try and work my way through the materials that i'm not really using while you know while i'm messy sketching observationally sketching and all that kind of stuff um, so lots of new materials aren't great but these are going to be really good to join in art club if you haven't joined in art club with the witch illustration go and check them out on on instagram i'll also link them in the video description but even though i didn't get any more uh, art materials what i did manage to snaffle from mum's house are these let me turn you around look at this gorgeous collection of creatures inspiration drawing prompts ornaments call them what you will but these are going to be great for doing quick time sketches, practicing drawing, practicing making these into illustrated characters that have feelings and can jump around and skip and roll and whatever else I want to practice them doing. Because sometimes when you're practicing, it's really good to have an ornament or something that you can draw from life and then it's one step away from you giving up and quitting when you can't think of a character. So when you're practicing, try and find an, an ornament or a Christmas decoration or whatever and draw it realistically and then draw it with different feelings. So pick happy, sad, I don't know, excited, despondent, ecstatic, I don't know. Uh, then try and draw it. Run, how would it look? Running, jumping, falling flying, uh, clapping its hands, crying, and then you've got a bank of practice, like muscle memory. They might not turn out beautifully, but then you've got a bank of muscle memory from your practice of making this into a little movable character. So the next time you come to do a character, whether it's sketchbook practice or, you know, your next project, you will already have experienced trying to make a static character run, jump, roll, climb trees, star jump, hop, skip, cry, laugh, you know? So having a little bank of interesting little objet d'art <laughs> is really good as a kind of springboard to practice your art and illustration. That's why if you look over here, you'll find I've got a little cabinet full of little ornaments and bits and bobs that are found in charity shops, which I use to draw. Let me show you. So I keep them in this little cabinet so they don't get dusty. I've got this cabinet second hand and they're all in there. Little interesting, interesting characters and ornaments 
And when I am at a loss of what to draw or I'm not feeling inspired, I'll pick one at random, get my big sketchbook out and do some quick drawings of them, you know, laughing, jumping, rolling, uh, clapping, hopping, skipping, you know, just to practice putting these characters into a setting. So when I come to do it seriously for a project, I've already got a bank of muscle memory practice in my brain. So that's that. Now, despite it raining, I do actually want to go out and get some brunch. I'm going to grab my sketchbook and a pencil. And when we go out, I'm going to take that with me. And let's see if I get some sketching done too. I'm back. Uh, I thought before I end this video we could test out these paint sticks and see maybe with maybe making some something out of these do some quick sketches of these uh, just to see what they're like because I've never used them before so let's see but first it's a little bit nippy in the house so I'm going to put on another one of my Christmas presents. Okay so <laughs> I'm all wrapped up in a new big oversized jumper, I love it. Perfect for sitting in a cold studio. Right, so I've got my big A3 sketchbook, which when you open it up, it makes A2. And this is the sketchbook that I do art clubs in. Let me show you the last art club session we did. We did a Christmas one and it was Christmas collage. I just make space. So yeah, I like using an A3 sketchbook for like playing around and messing around with new materials and like no non-committal stuff, just blobbing paint around. And the last art club that they did was collage. So I was collaging some of my little ornaments from the cupboard and I didn't have any glue. So I had to use tape, double back on itself, roll back. And there's my three minute Christmas sloth. So this is what I'm going to use to just play around, maybe maybe do some of these guys with my new paint sticks. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's worked quite well. They're actually really nice to work with. They're actually really yummy and creamy to apply. And, you know, they're not so precise that you're going to get caught up in the detail, as, as my paintings show. But for a bit of practice, for loosening up and not getting too bothered about the end result, great stuff. Now, uh, I, know, I know I've said before that I am a plastic-free business and I am uh, plastic free in my personal life as well or trying to be as much as possible so that's why I don't use acrylic paints and all that kind of stuff these are in plastic I don't know if they are refillable so I probably wouldn't have bought them myself but I've got them so I'm going to use them and they are a really good resource so if you do get these keep the lid on so they don't dry up and use every little bit of them uh, they are actually really yummy to work with and I know some people if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my kind of creative journey and like I'm, I'm all about loosening up at the moment and not really caring about the end result you might look at this and go well that looks like a child's done it and I love the fact it looks like a child's done it um this isn't like my finished style but I'm all about quickening up and getting used to making bad pancakes on the page. If you haven't heard me say it before, you might not know what I mean when I say bad pancakes, but I like to think of my sketches as pancakes. So if you've ever made pancakes, you will know that your first few pancakes don't look like pancakes, and that's fine, because if you ever want to get to the delicious pancakes, you've got to first persevere with the ones that aren't the shape of a pancake, uh, are a little bit raw in the middle, might be burnt on the outside, can't flip. But that's all a necessary process of making pancakes because it's how you learn that the pan's the right temperature or the mixture's too thick or too thin or needs whisking more. And it's the same with sketching. If you never see the messy part of, you know, getting your eye in and playing around and experimenting, you'll never get to the juicy pancakes. So when I'm sketching, when I'm doing a day of sketching, my first few sketches, I mean, they might be all right, but they might not be exactly what I'm expecting because my hand-eye coordination needs to warm up. You know, my I need to get my eye in. My I need to I need to kind of get used to the setting and find the right materials and and stuff. And I always find that my first few sketches are always rough, always a bit wonky, wonkier than expecting. And since I've come to accept that and expect that, uh, I end up with much nicer end results where I can play around and experiment and I am not bothered if someone looks over my shoulder and sees the mess that I've made. To me it's all part of the process. If I never get used to seeing a mess on the page I'm never going to be able to do anything with it because if I quit when I see that something's not turned out quite right then uh, I'm, I'm never going to develop. And I think that was my problem before with sketching and sketchbooking is that I'd see all of these perfect little sketchbooks on Pinterest, on Instagram. You know, you don't have the background story that however many hours it's taken and how many how many pages of the sketchbook didn't look like that. And you get the idea that just because, oh, I haven't been able to produce something ultra beautiful like that first go, I must be rubbish. It's not. It's not at all. It just might be you haven't seen the full story of that picture. But for me now, I think it's I think it's not healthy as someone who makes content for YouTube, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. I don't think it's healthy. It's not creating a healthy environment if I never show you that sometimes the day looks like this. And that's 100% fine. It's part of the process. If you never do this, you never do anything more finished. And you never actually feel like you're being playful in your creativity because you're always uptight and bothered about what are people going to think about the end result. If you've never seen me before, if, you, if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. But I used to draw a lot more realistically. I used to draw realistic landscapes, used to do watercolour and charcoal landscapes, and they used to be so, like, not hyper-realistic, but, like, pretty realistic. You could tell where the places were that I was I was drawing. And I felt, I mean, I enjoyed the end result, but I didn't enjoy the process. And I felt pressured into having to do something that was so realistic, just so some imaginary person, when they saw it, would know that I could do art. 
and now I'm not doing I'm not doing my art for them. I am on a journey of finding something that I like and something that feels like me. And sometimes this is the way to go. In this page, I am so pleased <laughs> with this with this elephant. I'm so chuffed with that guy and this lion as well. All of them are pretty cute, pretty cool. And they all served a purpose to loosen me up and practice new materials and you know, just unlock a little bit of fun in your brain. Uh, but genuinely, I am happy, <laughs> really happy with that elephant. Let me show you. This is where I'm going to leave this video because I have coffee and chocolate downstairs with Andy waiting for me. So I want to go and enjoy that. So until the next one, bye.